Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I am going to share with you how we organize our bookshelves. I'm just going to span our homeschool room right now which is like an upstairs playroom and a family library. We keep a lot of things up in this room, it's a nice large room and we have the space to keep all of the books, mostly, <laughs> and a lot of the toys. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here. This is the latest addition to our homeschool room. Our chalkboard used to be freestanding. It was a mobile chalkboard on wheels, but we've since mounted it on the wall. We added a shelf above with lights, and then we added these two IKEA bookshelves below. These IKEA bookshelves are the one by fives, and I've just stacked two of them lying down on their side rather than upright. So let me take you over here and show you how we've organized this bookshelf. This bookshelf keeps a lot of the books that we have for our unit studies and main lesson blocks. And these books used to all be stored in unit study bins in other areas in our homeschool room. What I like about moving them to an open bookcase is that since most of these materials are books, it was a lot easier for us to have it in a bookcase. And it was more inviting for the kids to pick out these books rather than having them in unit study bins and then they're put away in a cabinet somewhere. I went ahead and I added some labels here and then I just mostly consolidated our books to fit those different subject areas, although there is a little bit of variation. So in this first cubby here, we have American history. Actually, the cubby next to it also has American history, and then down below has American history, and right here has Native American history. So right now, all the different tribes are all consolidated into one cubby and then you can see that we have a couple of projects here for when we get to this unit we have these projects ready to go. We also didn't get to all of our American history unit studies last year and so there are still some hands-on projects here for the units that we didn't get to. This unit has the Western Movement and the Gold Rush, which also includes some of those hands-on projects. Now, I really like these bookcases. You can see they're really deep. And on all of these different cubbies, we actually have two rows of books. So if you look all the way in the back there, that you can see some hands-on projects, but there's also a row of books in the back. So let me pull some of these out so that you can see. That has the Little House series. And so what I did was in the front, I put all of the larger books and in the back, I put all of the historical fiction because most of these cubbies over here house our history books. And so in the front, I'll have mostly the nonfiction books and then all the way in the back, I'll have all the historical fiction. And the Little House on the Prairie series isn't actually historical fiction, but I put that back there along with the historical fiction and some of the other hands-on projects. So in this cubby, I have quite a mix of different subject areas within US history because I was consolidating a couple of different main lesson blocks and unit studies together. So this one doesn't have quite as much cohesion as the other bookshelves and cubbies. But again, in the back, there are some more books and in this case, there are some Professor Noggins games. So that's a great way to store some of the other things that would go with the unit if you organize your bookshelves this way. You can put some of the other projects and games and things that go along with the unit so it's all in one place. So that's the same down here. We happen to have some series here that took up quite a bit of this cubby, but it's basically the same as the previous three. This cubby here has some of the things that we're going to be using for our Middle Ages unit, some of the games and projects. However, this is not what's going to be here ultimately. Though my label does say Middle Ages games and projects, I also have a label behind it that says Ancient Egypt because my Ancient Egypt unit study right now is being lent out, but when it comes back, that's where it's going to go. Above here, I have Ancient Rome, so I've got mythology and historical fiction. This is the unit that we're doing right now. So I've organized it by the different weeks that we're going to be doing. So we have like week one and two towards the beginning and anything that we've already completed, I've put towards the back. So the historical fiction that my son has already read for this unit is all the way in the back. And then it just progresses for the, the weeks 
for this particular unit that has six weeks. Down here we have our ancient Greece main lesson block and I chose to put a main lesson uh, block in here that had fewer resources and books than some of the other ones because I have that huge power cord right there and that's for all of the lights that are all the way above here because there are four at the bottom of the shelf and three at the top. And so that was a lot of wires to hide behind our chalkboard, which ultimately end up down here. So for this particular cubby, I just wanted to do the one that had the least amount of resources and books. Moving up, I have a Middle Ages unit right here, and this one is literally overflowing. You can see the books in the back are just squeezed in there. I actually want to divide this Middle Ages uh, unit study into two different unit studies, one for the European Middle Ages and then another one for the Asian and the Islamic Empire during the same time. But I have so many resources on the explorers at that time and the developments and just the culture and the history of other parts of the world that I think that this unit will be better served as two different units. But right now, if you notice that our label says Middle Ages, it says, it says Silk Route and the Golden Age of Islam, as well as the Middle Ages. And so that has so many resources that it's just, there's just not enough room for all of it there. And that's why some of our projects are down there, just because that happens to be one of our biggest units. Next to it, we have an astronomy main lesson block. And again, here, like the other ones, I mostly have books, but I also do have some of our projects. And then in the back, there's also a huge kit that has different projects for this astronomy unit. For this unit, we happen to have another bin in our cabinets over here, where we actually keep our telescope and binoculars and some other games and projects related to this unit, simply because it didn't all fit in one spot. Down below, I have a basically natural science unit, which includes many different main lesson blocks and units all in one space. So this wasn't the best way to organize this one, and you'll see in a little bit why, because there are other places where I have some books that would coordinate with these different units. And so this is something that when I begin a unit on either botany, oceanography, zoology, or a mini unit on say sharks or on bees, I have to really comb through these books to make sure that I haven't missed any resources that I had intended to use for that particular unit. So to the left of this bookcase, we have another bookcase over here. And this one houses a lot of our games. In the top cubby on the left, we have our geography and American history games. And then on the bottom two and the top right, we have all the preschool, first grade, second grade, third grade games there. Okay, so originally a lot of our units were stored in this cabinet over here, which also included all of our books inside these bins. You can see these bins aren't that big, and so it wasn't able to hold as many resources as we had. And so some of our larger units ended up being in even larger bins in this homeschool room. And overall, it just started to get a little bit congested, and that is why we opted to move many of the units that were mostly books over into this this area over here but because I still have these unit study bins with some of the other materials you can see that some of them still contain some books that would otherwise work really well in our uh, bookcase over there so I uh, still have some of those things in two different places which means I have to search all areas of our homeschool room before we put together any of our units all right, so let me swing around to the other side of the homeschool room and show you the rest of the bookcases. So on this side of the room, we have multiple bookcases that are just pieced together. This wasn't sold as an entire unit. We have some one by fives all the way over there in the corner. And then we have a two by four over here. So you can see there are eight cubbies here. And then a little two by two over here, which has our games and different kits and things related to our unit studies and main lesson blocks. So let me take you over here. On the top shelf here, I actually have quite an assortment of books that most of them could end up in the bookcase that I showed you previously underneath our chalkboard. 
Over here, we have a little tiny mini unit on dinosaurs and a little one on the Titanic. Then we move into some sciences and then some other random books and then back to sciences again. So there's not a whole lot of organization up here. Many of these books could end up in the cubbies that I previous, previously showed you. The problem is, is that there wasn't enough room for them over there. And so I had to leave them on this side of the room. Over here, there are books that would span multiple units and multiple time periods uh, for the history ones. And then here we have ones that would fit really well with our natural sciences, but they're still up here, in part because these books also span a lot of different topics. So if we're doing something on sharks or on botany or on uh, you know pine cones and conifers then you know these books will have a lot of information about those multiple subject areas and so they're kind of up here because they can go with different units same with the history over here and then like the, the mythology that will go with many units and that's why they're up here in that own cubby without like a lot more organization compared to the rest of the cubbies in this cubby over here, we have our Islamic books to the left, and then to the right, we have our Waldorf books, which include some of the resources that I would use to teach and also some of the read-alouds that I am doing with my children. Again, on this bookcase, we always have two rows of books. So in the back, we have uh, rows of books that are shorter that just fit well because these ones in the front are taller and deeper and then the ones in the back are shorter and so those ones are going to be for various unit studies that we're doing so I just need to remember to go in there and pull those books when we get ready to do those particular unit studies. Over here we have a number of picture books on the right side and then a couple of miscellaneous books over on the left and then in this cubby here we have almost all picture books with the theme of female role models for most of them not all of them but many of these are female role model picture books moving down we have a lot of our poetry books here as well as our fairy tale books and then a couple other books that just kind of fit this space over here we have all of our math picture books and a couple of our math resource books, but the majority of our math resource books are in a unit study bin in our cabinet. This little cubby here has some of our pop-up books and ones that have interactive flaps and details. Down below, we have our preschool, kindergarten, first grade books. These are the read-alouds that I read for my children. The ones on the left are the ABC books, and then to the right or towards the middle, we have our Islamic books, and then we have some series that the children really like, like the Curious George series, and If You Give a Mouse a Cookie series. And so my children still really like those, and that's why we still have them here. This next cubby has the picture books that we've probably had the longest. You can see there's a lot of wear and tear on these ones. And then moving over to this cubby over here, we have just some extra space towards the front because there are some larger books in the back. So we just put some of the just novels and different fiction that we have here that the kids might be interested in. This gets traded out probably the most out of all the different uh, cubbies in our bookcase just because once they read it they're not going to read it again anytime soon so then I will put those towards the back of another row of books and then pull out some new ones. Okay moving up this bookcase at the very top we have two cubbies of our Islamic books. Again those are double rows so there are Islamic books behind the ones you see and then on this last bookcase over here in the corner there are another three cubbies of Islamic books and then the very last one has mostly our reference books like dictionaries and thesaurus and atlases but then there are also a couple more Islamic books some of the Sira books that I read to the children. All right, so that rounds out our bookcase. If you want more details about our homeschool room, don't forget to tap the video on the screen because that's going to give you a nice detailed look at our whole entire homeschool room. And if you wanna see what we are up to on a daily basis, don't forget that you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.